How's it going? The dev stream has come to a close and we have a bunch of information that came from this ranging from the cataclysm including actual gameplay to what's involved, features, loot in the cataclysm, update on matchmaking, PTS update, rewards including a new vendor in Fort Tarsus, finally an update on the actual loot and the removal of luck entirely as a stat, leaderboards and inversions. So if you find this useful do drop a like if you're new this is your one stop shop for Anthem so make sure to subscribe and hit that bell so you're notified of all content I release and finally don't forget to share. So the Cataclysm will be an 8 week event, I'll be sharing my thoughts on this being a timed event towards the end of the video but for now I want to continue. The first two weeks of the Cataclysm will be pre-events that will be leading up to the Cataclysm itself. We will have three critical path missions, all with cinematic scenes, confirmed by the head honcho Ben Irving himself. The Cataclysm will take place in a new area entirely and will be host to three new systems, scoring, inversions and leaderboards. Once the Cataclysm starts, it will be a six week affair to get everything you need to get before it disappears. Whether it's going to come back or not is still unconfirmed, but we'll get to that at the end of the video. The first thing you'll notice is the timer as well as this you'll notice that your health is constantly dropping. This will continue to drop till you die. However to prevent this you'll see what is essentially a shape of surge. You need to shoot this to create a bubble which in turn creates a safe place for you for a set duration. These will essentially be your way of battling in a safe environment. However they will disappear but simply shooting them re-engages the safe area. There seems to be a total of 8 areas for you to challenge each with their own mechanics and mastery, so it is starting to sound very promising. First, let's look at scoring. On the right you will see a score, this is what dictates how well you did. The higher the score, the better chances you have of getting better rewards. You're also timed in this endeavour. You start with currently at a 15 minute timer, but this is extended after every successful arena clear, earning you more time as you hop from arena to arena, making your way to the final boss. The final boss, called Vara, upon defeat will double your score, so it's highly worthwhile taking out the boss last, as long as you have time, if you're aiming for that high score. Or simply put, if you see that you're running out of time, making a beeline straight for the boss to double whatever result you have is still a good way of getting that high score. As you can see from the actual video itself, the storm looks pretty cool, however it doesn't really mimic a cataclysm but I was expecting something a lot more. However, Ben Irving promised that the storm itself will look much better than what we see now. This is pretty much a work in progress and something that they've put together for the time being. One thing that is completely unclear is whether it will have any real effect on us, will it affect our flying, will it affect our health, will it affect anything else in regards to our ability to control our javelins. It's currently unknown, I don't expect it to, I expect it to be an aesthetic effect, however, nonetheless, it's still something worth pondering about. Inversions are essentially modifiers. Thankfully, they seem to be positive modifiers, with the examples they use being your ultimate charging up to 400% faster or you having 500% more damage output as possible options. Not really much else to say on these. If you played Destiny and loved the positive modifiers when they existed doing the Nightfalls, then you'll know exactly how much fun these will bring and not only that, but also change the way you approach and play the Cataclysm as a whole. Don't forget, these inversions will change periodically. At present, it's hinted to be weekly, but we aren't 100% sure on this. But even if it is weekly, that means that there's going to be 6 different inversions that are going to take place which will change the meta completely based on what they're giving you. For example, if they turn around and say SMGs are the way to go this week, they're going to give you 5000% more damage, you're definitely going to be bringing an SMG with you and that will change the way you play the game. These are the sorts of things that they're aiming for and these are the type of things that they want to introduce with the inversions to change the meta and get you playing differently week in week out. Leaderboards are finally surfacing as well, these will be used to compare your score with other players. The event will incentivize you to compete with your friends, squad members and the term they used, guild members, which means we will also be getting a guild system finally. Here is hoping the clan capacity will be big enough so we can all join under one roof, but I'm also looking to PC and Xbox so we 
so it would be great to get more of you into the Discord as the guild release gets closer so we can conquer all three platforms. You know it makes sense, join the Discord, it's in the description below, everyone is welcome. The Cataclysm will bring new loot, yes brand new loot, you heard that right, new weapons, new masterworks gear and something that will get you somewhat excited, melee equipable slots. No, 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 no. Nothing awesome like a plasma sword I'm afraid, this is what I was hoping for but it's not. There will be variants of existing melees, which in itself is really cool. Ben used the example, Ranger has a detonating version of current shock mace, which is at this moment in time a primer. So you'll have different, so you'll basically be getting different variants of stuff with the opposite effect. So if it was a detonator, it will now be a primer. If it was a primer, it will now be a detonator. And this will vary the way you play the game exponentially. Along with these, we will finally be getting masterwork and legendary versions of support gear. Yes, they are finally coming, which is amazingly awesome news. It was also noted that all new items will have a 5 gear score increase. They did however make it sound like this will apply to both masterworks and legendaries, but it's unclear if they will retain the same gear score, but be inscription dependent for stats availability. So though they will both be, say hypothetically, 76 gear score, the masterwork could cap out at 200%, whereas the legendary one will cap out at 300%. So I assume if they are going to have the same gear score, the stats themselves on the inscriptions will be the decided factor of one pushing slightly ahead. Of course, these are random drops that you can get. Bioware have made it so the Cataclysm will drop a new currency as well, which is attainable not only in the Cataclysm itself, but within the war chest as well, which I'm going to assume is the next Vanity's chest heading to Anthem, much like the Elysium caches. In regards to the war chest, it seems they will rotate inventory weekly, which could be a pain. So what do you do with this new currency? Well, it's quite simple. In Fort Tarsus, there will be a new vendor accepting this currency. This will be your guaranteed way of getting certain loot, and it's about time as well. Right, that was pretty much everything when it comes to the Cataclysm. What do you all think? Excited? Not excited? Let me know in the comment section below. Despite the fact that it is an 8 week event and I have my reservations on this, I'm actually thoroughly excited for this event. The actual map looks awesome. The setting looks great and the way the mechanics are working from what I've just seen a little glimpse of look interesting and the fact that each one will be varied and different and require you to coordinate and play as a team has got me really excited for the Cataclysm when it finally does hit. Matchmaking. Matchmaking since the tweak has actually caused a lot of problems for people and they have confirmed they are looking at making changes to the timer. It was supposed to be a maximum of 3 minutes, but clearly something has gone wrong with people waiting upwards of 15 minutes. So hopefully this will sort out in the near future as it is a server side fix, so I do expect a fix for this fairly soon. So with the matchmaking out of the way, on to loot. Yes, the legendary topic of loot has finally been addressed somewhat. They are outright removing luck from the game, and all javelins will now have a max base stat of luck. All gear with luck will have it replaced with armor, which was confirmed on stream. Now, what does this mean to the actual players? Well, internal testing has shown by giving everyone max luck by default, much more loot has been dropping as a result which is always a good sign. Now whether this means that the original estimation or the original figures given to us of 90 luck was actually incorrect or not is unknown. This wasn't revealed in the actual stream itself and for all intents and purposes we could have been at the rock bottom of luck with 90 luck. So we really don't know. However, now that they've actually gotten rid of luck as a stat for you to actually use as a modified loot and giving you the maximum luck you can get as a default base stat that's intrinsic to every single javelin you have, loot seems to be dropping a hell of a lot more. So hopefully this will be the catalyst fix that will finally fix the dreaded loot situation. How do you all feel about the loot situation essentially being screwed over by the luck system? Let me know in the comment section below. Are you happy that loot is finally being addressed? Is this the type of news you've been waiting for? 
Of course, we don't have an ETA on when this is actually getting fixed. They have actually got it now fixed internally. So we may have to wait until the cataclysm itself comes out before this is actually going to hit us. But as you can see, it wasn't a simple case of upping the drop rates. It was in this case from the internal testing, the Luxstat basically being broken. Now, whether this Luxstat internally was being adjusted on or off while we were playing is another matter. Here is hoping that we get the cataclysm sooner rather than later and we can finally improve our loot situation and actually go back to having fun instead of purple rain. GM3 will be rebalanced in both enemy health damage and will bring it in line with the other two GMs based on their recommended gear score. This is a pretty good change and one that's needed. GM3 when I last played it was doable. It wasn't overly difficult but the sponginess and the fact that you were going down so quickly just seemed so unfair especially when at times you really just couldn't hide anywhere. So I'm happy that they are actually looking at GM3 and rebalancing it and bringing it more in line with what it should be. Finally, I wanted to talk about the PTS. You do not need to own Anthem on PC to gain access. However, it's undetermined if you'll gain access in week one. It may be a case that if you do own Anthem, you gain access to the PTS from week one, whereas if you don't, you'll gain access on week two. It's also been confirmed that the PTS itself won't be up 24 seven and will have pocket windows for it to be up where you can go in, test things out and then report your issues, findings and general impressions to them so they can continue working, tweaking and fixing what needs to be done. So here's hoping that we soon find out more information about the PTS and access rights and hopefully it will be open to all on PC and not just those that have actually bought it on PC because then it would be really unfair on those that have actually bought it on other platforms like the Xbox One and the PS4 that do want to try it on PC but simply can't because then they would have to actually buy the game again and that's just really unfair and really a dick move to do. That was pretty much the complete stream covered and I hope this has finally answered your burning questions. Earlier I mentioned I'm not happy with the 8 weeks as I feel this cataclysm needed to be a permanent feature, something we can tackle weekly as a pinnacle event. However, this is not the case. Now I appreciate law wise it shouldn't make sense, but neither does killing the monitor 10,000 times. But you know what? Law or not, we still do it. So Jesse, Andrew, Ben, please change this so it remains a permanent feature. It really needs to be and I'm greatly saddened that it is not. We want more content, not content taken away from us. So I'm hoping we can make enough noise on this and make it a perm feature for us all. Because at this present time, timed content is bad. If you're looking at timed content from other games, it's a real ball ache, it's really horrible. And honestly, if the Cataclysm does turn out to be amazingly good after six weeks of them removing it and taking everything away, it's gonna leave a massive void and it's going to hit everyone real hard. So here's hoping that with enough noise, with enough pressure, we can actually convince them that leaving the Cataclysm here as a permanent feature will actually be a good thing and not a bad thing. Right. If you have any other questions for me, the comment section below is where you can air those views and I'll get back to you in due course. I do read every single comment that you guys leave me. So rest assured, if there is a comment that I can respond to, I will. Until the next time, freelancers, remain legend.